And welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So this is going to be a video dealing with conv designing a, an adventure for convention play or one-shot play or for a game store. You're going to run a demo. <clears throat> Because those goals are different when you're writing these adventures than when you're writing one for your home campaign. So now, and I, I, I will freely admit that I like to use the itch.io one-page dungeon generator. I'll include a link. So I this is what the first thing it generated. And I think this, this looks beautiful for a home campaign. It's too large. It's too large. You got 25 rooms. You figure if you're running in a convention, you've got three to five hours. Uh, figure setup, bathroom breaks. You've got four, four hours and 15 minutes tops of actually running an adventure. I don't care if half these rooms are empty. They're still exploring the rooms. And as players, they want to search everything. So. The reason why I left it up here is I'm going to show you how easy it is. I just refresh the page. Now, now I've got uh, an eight-room setup here. M maybe you want to have a partially flooded room. Maybe you don't. But, but let's say what you see on this, what you see on the screen is what you decide to go with. You have. Let's see. You have an entrance on the left side. Room one is the entrance. You could have room six be a shrine, a temple. Uh, you could have treasure in room four down south. And that flooded room, it's a challenge. <clears throat> you can uh, ignore those stairs going down. Or, this is an important part, if your party gets through these eight rooms real quickly, well, then what do you do? Well, you've already got stairs on this map. You can add on another chamber or two down below. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because when you're running an adventure at a, at a convention or at a game store as a demo, again, I'm not talking about running something as a part of a campaign. You need to make sure everybody at that table is having fun. So there are a few rules to follow. And, you know, this is just a general thing. <clears throat> I've run a number of uh, sessions at conventions over the years. Uh, Pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, I've run it with uh, terrain like uh, the Mouth of Doom. You have to maintain a certain pacing. You have to engage all your players. Again, when you're running with your regular group, that takes care of itself. When you're running with strangers, you got to keep them involved. And honestly, unless they are playing like a real stupid individual, you should not be killing anybody off within those first two hours or so. And why do I say two hours? Most sessions are going to be four hours. They should get at least half that session, even if they're Dice are rolling bad. You should not be setting things up where the party members are going to stop dropping flies within those first two hours. So, no, if you know where the party is going to be, or you can suspect many times when you work, when you generate these uh, maps with the uh, one page dungeon, sometimes they're kind of linear. That's fine. If you know. This is the end where the party's going to make that encounter awesome and hard. And if the players play well, they succeed. And if they play poorly, they die. But you shouldn't take advantage of the party. And that's called taking advantage of the party, taking advantage of the players early in that adventure. They're not used to playing together. They haven't figured out. They haven't meshed yet. Make those initial encounters relatively easy or make the trap obvious and make it non-lethal okay 
there is a method to that madness. Your players are there to have a good time. The DM is there to ensure your players have a good time. If there's too much for them to explore, they're not going to get that sense of accomplishment. If there's too little to explore, they're going to finish too quickly, which is why in a dungeon like this one, where up in this upper right-hand corner, there are stairs from what will probably be your main uh, big bad guy location. It's good. Oh, my God. I had a four-hour slot, and they finished it in two hours and 15 minutes. Well, behind the curtains is a door that leads on. Now, you could prep that area if necessary. You could wing it if necessary. Those are all acceptable because, again, this isn't a campaign adventure. So, again, build up the challenges. Don't hit them from the beginning with something that's too hard. The oh shit run away, certainly viable, but less so when you're trying to get a party to complete a goal in a set time. Deciding the theme. It has to be more than just grab the treasure and run. Your, your players need a, a, a bigger goal. Maybe there's a cult. Maybe there's a demon. Maybe there's a mad necromancer. Maybe the undead are rising. All these things are fine. It should be more than just find the gold, find the treasure. Now, especially if it's going to be a one-shot, don't be stingy on giving out magic items. It's a one-shot. Let your players enjoy it. <coughs> Let them get something that they wouldn't get in their home campaign. You know, maybe even though it's a party, you know, it's a second-level adventure, maybe they get a wand of fireballs with one charge. Wow, they're not going to hold on to it to the next adventure. They're going to use it. Now, that being said, when you give out these magic items to your party members, take that into account, especially for the final encounter, the big, bad, evil guy. You don't want that to fall to the wayside too quickly. And, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to give away a secret. If your players are going... And, it, and it's progressing too slowly, and they're coming up on that time frame, move the big bait evil guy to the next room, no matter what room that is. That's where, that's, that's where the BBEG is. And if they are getting there way too quickly, just move it. It hasn't happened until it's actually happened. Again, this isn't a campaign adventure. Campaign adventures are totally different. Now, if you're a player in a campaign, you're going to search every room. You're looking for every copper piece. When you are dealing with uh, a convention game, uh, a demo game, a, a game, a, a one shot in your local friendly game store, you have an objective. Keep an eye on that objective. That is kind of like. Uh, ooh, this is what it takes to win. Kill the big, bad, evil guy. Everything else is just gravy. So now, what if you have trouble stocking this? Well, guess what? Chat GPT, can, you can upload that map. And you can tell it, I want an OSC adventure for levels one to two with seven to eight player characters. I want it to be moderately difficult. I would like the big, bad, evil guys to be cultist summoning an evil demon. Whatever. The more you give it, the more detailed it will spit out. And then you take what it spit out and you replace 90% of it, if not more. But it's great for, if you got that writer's block, free up that writer's block. So I... That, I think, is a great use for AI. I wouldn't say, hey, AI, spit out an adventure and I'm going to charge people five bucks for it. That's that's not creativity. But if I'm going to use this in my home campaign and I'm going to use it to fit my writer's block and go in and then 
adjust it? I think that's fine. But Joe, the lawyer, it, it, it makes his head hurt. But again, these are some techniques for when you're running an adventure at, at, a, at a convention. It's a one shot. Your players need a goal. Your, your PCs should not be killed off, if at all possible, if it is, unless it's through their pure stupidity within the first half session, first half of the session. It's a two hour session. And you should, unless you've got like uh, other PCs lined up to take their place, pre gens, and you, and, that, and, it, and you explain that ahead of time, hey, if you die, you're just taking out the pre gen, that's fine. But you don't want players, and I've seen this happen, die in the first 30 minutes of a five hour session and be stuck with nothing to do. It's not fair to the player. Just my thoughts. You may disagree. Folks, on that note, uh, we are... There's a link at the bottom of the screen. Tankcards-tavern.game slash cubicle7. This will take you to Humble Bundle. There is a Warhammer 40k RPG link. And it is for two of the... Not the Dark Heresy game, which I, I've used and... Uh, played in back in the day is for Death Watch and Rogue Trader. So there's a different there are different flavors of Warhammer 40k all within the same universe. Uh, Death Watch is really grunts. Rogue Trader is more of a freelance uh, type of deal. But if you're into the Warhammer 40k universe, it's great resource material. If you love running the games, it's even better. Um, other than that, I am uh, experimenting with Restream. So we're going to be trying different interfaces for these live streams and for these pre-recorded videos. So don't be upset. Don't be shocked. Go, it looks different. Yes, it looks different. I understand that. But it'd be, it's an improvement, trust me. All right, folks. On that note, live stream tomorrow night, Matt Finch will be our special guest. We'll be talking all things or delivery. On a K, that note, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll the dice, roll them well. Like, subscribe, comment, you know the thing. Oh, and that's right, by the way, if you have your own tricks for running games at conventions, let us know. Please. The more information, the more tools, the better. All right, folks.